He is a renowned artist, activist, and filmmaker. Ai Weiwei has made it his life's mission to raise awareness about human rights abuses around the world. His latest project, which is screening at Hot Docs, is a new film called The Rest. It's a gripping and raw look at life inside a number of refugee camps right across Europe. Ben sat down with the man who is in self-imposed exile from China to speak about the new film, our relationship with China, and whether he'd ever go back. Sir, this is a, a gripping look at life for so many people stuck in refugee camps across Europe. So much of your work uh, has been about displacement, the realities of those who are fleeing their home countries. Why is it important for you to bear witness and to tell these stories? Well, at first, I think uh, this story repeats itself, uh, not just happening now, but uh, in the history and uh, generations. It, it's just, uh, uh, if you look at uh, Canada, we look at the uh, United States or Europe, the human flow, the people being forced out from their home and uh, trying to find a, a safer place to develop. This is a very common situation in human history. It's hard to believe that we're in Europe. One of the things that is so striking about the film is how open um, people in the camps are at sharing their stories. You know, we witness some young men saying they simply don't want to live anymore. You are steeped in these stories. And I wonder what it's like for you to absorb those stories? For me, it's a learning process. I come from a communist society. You know, we all, I used to criticize human rights conditions and uh, freedom of speech all the time. I do feel I share their feelings, and uh, I, I do feel their, their conditions should be exposed to the world. Your art seemed to take a, a strong turn after the earthquake in Sichuan province in 2008. And you made it your mission to go out and identify every missing student, uh, their identities, despite what appeared to be a, a concerted and coordinated effort by the government to, to cover that, those very facts up. What was it about that event that pivoted your art and, and how did it change what you wanted to do? By 2008, I've become more involved with, with the internet. After a strong earthquake, I realized there's a thousand students disappeared. So I started to ask questions, ask, ask transparency, ask so-called social justice. That got me involved deeply in uh, politics uh, on a very open platform, um, you know, the internet. At that time, I still can, I, I last for one year, they, they shut me down totally. But, uh, uh, because they cannot bear with it. You know, it's just uh, the truth is most uh, harmful thing for this kind of society. But also put me in a very uh, strange, extreme condition. I become some kind of spokesperson about human rights or freedom of speech. China is often and continues to be a strong focus in your work. Canada has had its own precarious diplomatic situation with China recently. What do you think of that situation and what do we need to know about the diplomatic idiosyncrasies of working with China? I think um, we all have to work with China. If I look at Canadian, you have a, a, such a privilege about uh, understanding human rights, human dignity, fairness in society, and the uh, practice of law, you know, all those things. Uh, uh, it's, that is the strongest point about Cana uh, Canada or Canadians. So I think with a long vision, we have to trust the society has to perform that way and the China will change into that kind of society. We have to believe this is what benefit China. So you have to respect your, your business uh, partner, 
and uh, to to try to offer them best advice, you know. But by doing that, you have to have to persistently mm. and have a clear demand to let them respect you. You cannot just change in position or, or or shifting your your principles. You're not allowed to talk. I'm on prob uh, probation. So. Would you ever return to China? And if you did, would you be fearful for your safety? I. I would, but uh, now 12 of my lawyers still serving time, so I cannot guarantee uh, if I return I will be safe. Lastly, uh, what would you tell audiences who will go see the rest and come out with perhaps a sense of hopelessness? People might come out of it saying they're they have neither the emotional roadmap to feel good about trying to help, nor a practical roadmap about how to improve the situation. What would you say to those people? I would say the film uh, would put everybody, me or, or any audience, on the same condition. We have to see humanity as a one. We cannot say we are separated from a, a disasters or unfortunate condition. We are part of it. If we don't help or defend those people and uh, we're you know simply we're guilty about it sir thank you very much for your time thank you for your work we appreciate everything you do thank you so much thank you very much thank you so nice talking to you great what an interview the rest is screening at hot docs canadian international documentary festival right now we'll have more information on our your morning website